Today we're talking about five of the biggest mistakes beginners make when using Studio One and ultimately how to avoid these common pitfalls to get the most out of your sessions. Okay, so the first mistake I see beginners make when jumping into Studio One is attempting to relaunch a previous session from the start page. The start page is the first page that you see when you launch Studio One. And as you might've noticed, the left side of this page contains a list of any recent projects. Now at face value, this is incredibly convenient and you might be tempted to use this to bring up any past sessions and continue your work. But the problem arises whenever you actually start clicking on these songs and then suddenly get hit with this message. To understand why this happened, you have to first know that this startup page list is simply a snapshot of your song's last known file path location on your computer. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, it does become a problem when you move your session files to a new location after creating them. Studio One won't know if you move the file and therefore won't auto update this list. So it'll just try to pull that song from the last known file path. And if it doesn't find it, then that's when you get this error message. Now, of course, the perfect solution would be to never move your computer file so Studio One can continue to recall, but that's not always realistic. Even the simple act of putting that session file in a subfolder would still break the path and give you that exact same error. So then what I would recommend instead is to come up with an organization method that works best for you and then launch your sessions directly from your computer. So to give you an example, I work exclusively off of an external hard drive, which is right over here. And here I have a music folder, which is divided into beats, which is then subdivided into finished projects and ideas. And then one more folder called current project for any client work. And it is exactly from this hard drive where I launch all of my sessions. Aside from never having to worry about breaking file paths again, an additional benefit to doing it this way is that this also auto launches Studio One, so it just saves you an extra step and gets you to work faster. To speed this up even more, I also use a stream deck to launch my music folder with one button click and then launch my desired sessions from there. I am a nerd for productivity hacks, so if you want to see how I integrate my stream decks into my Studio One workflow, then let me know because I'd be happy to make a video. Moving on, the next mistake I see beginners making is using the default templates instead of creating your own. And although this is more of a personal opinion, maybe you can relate. So hear me out. If we go back to the startup page and click on new, here you will find a templates tab that is full of some default templates that personas put in here to help you get started based on what you're trying to accomplish. Now, I am sure that these were put here with the best of intentions aimed at making it easy for users to get going. But from my experience, I have found the opposite to be true. If you're anything like me, then all this list does is just give you a ton of overwhelm and analysis paralysis. And especially if you're brand new, because with so many options, where do you even begin? Do I want to play now? Do I want to record now? Do I want to produce beats? Maybe create content? What if it's a little bit of everything? Is there an option for that? With so many options, this ultimately might just sadly result in you just giving up and closing the software. Again, I'm sure these were put here with the best of intentions, but I much prefer to make my own template that specifically caters to my needs, my workflow, shows me exactly what I need to see, and most importantly, reduces my choices down to one. And once you create your own template, it'll show up here in the user area. And the reason this works is because every single template here on this list can be replicated by launching the default record and mix option, and then creating a template from that by adding only what you need. The only exception to this are the master and release and rehearse and perform templates, which launch the project page for mastering and the show page for live shows respectively, both of which are completely independent of everything else. But yeah, other than these two, I would highly recommend that you make your own template instead. Okay, next up on the list is not using keyboard shortcuts and macros. If someone asked me what's the one thing they could do to enhance their Studio One experience, my response, without a doubt, would be to learn some shortcuts and start using macros. Studio One has a ton of shortcuts that can speed up and enhance your workflow, and to find them, all you have to do is head over to the shortcuts panel in the Studio One menu. Here you can type in commands for anything that you wish to perform, and then see if they already have a shortcut that you can begin using. If they don't, or if you just wish to change a shortcut, then that is also fairly easy to do here as well. Macros, on the other hand, are a more complicated matter, but man, are they a game changer. Macros are basically a string of commands that you put together to execute an otherwise tedious task with a single button click. 
click and yes, as you probably guessed it, can also be mapped to a keyboard shortcut. Studio One comes packed with a ton of macros ready for you to explore. So if you want to get started, click on the macro symbol at the top here to open up the macros panel. And here you can shuffle through different toolbars created for different tasks. I am a huge fan of macros, so much so that I've built my own macro toolbars. And if you want access to one of them for free, then make sure to click the first link down below. There I'll link my free productivity toolbar, which you can see right up here. And this is basically a toolbar that combines a bunch of Studio One's production functions into easy to use one click buttons. Again, this toolbar is free, so enjoy. One of Studio One's biggest strengths, in my opinion, is its drag and drop functionality. And mistake number four that I see a lot of beginners make is not taking full advantage. One of the main reasons why I moved to Studio One over a decade ago was because of how friendly and intuitive the interface was. In Studio One, you can drag and drop almost anything from audio files to plugins and even effect chains, making it incredibly easy to build your session. The best part is that this feature is not exclusive to any specific area. The arrange view, the console, and the browser, which are Studio One's three main areas, all operate under this drag and drop ideology, allowing you to do some really cool things if you drag and drop between them. You probably know that you can drag and drop files from the browser into the arrange view, but what you can also do is drag and drop a plugin into any track to automatically add it, or even to an empty space in the arrange view to add a new track and then add that plugin with it. Furthermore, if you want to quickly create a send in the console, then it is as simple as taking any plugin from the browser and then dragging that into the send area for any track to have Studio One automatically add the plugin and also create the send track and route everything for you. Once you have a track sounding exactly how you want it to, you can save the entire thing if you're on Studio One 6 and above by dragging that entire track from the arrange view into the browser to save it as a track preset. I know Studio One can seem like a tough program to grasp at first, but trust me when I tell you that it becomes a lot easier when you realize that most of it can be operated with this feature. So when in doubt, just drag and drop. I've got one more mistake for you, but before we do, I do want to take a minute and thank the sponsor for this video, DistroKid. If you're an independent musician looking to distribute your music online, then DistroKid might be the perfect solution for you. With DistroKid, you can easily upload your music to all streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, and more for as low as $23 a year for unlimited uploads, and all while keeping 100% of your royalties. DistroKid includes a ton of other features with your subscription, like customizable hyperfollow pages to guide your followers to your most important links, YouTube artist channels, Spotify verification, and much, much more. So then if you want to get started today and spread your music to a broader audience, then consider signing up to DistroKid by clicking the link down below for 7% off your first year. But okay, this last mistake is for anyone who is brand new and looking to get into the Studio One ecosystem, and that is not taking advantage of gear bundles. At the moment, if you're wanting to get into Studio One and you visit the Persona's website, you'll see that you have three options, Sphere, Studio One Professional, and Studio One Artist. Artist is the entry-level version of Studio One, offering a limited number of features. Professional is a full DAW with everything it has to offer, both of which can be purchased at full price. And then finally, Sphere is Personas' membership that offers you the pro version along with other things for a monthly fee. Now, if subscriptions aren't your favorite and you aren't ready to invest the 400 in pro, then you probably end up in the artist tier and decide to do that for now since $100 is a lot more digestible. If you decide to go this route though, then I would highly urge you to consider if you need any gear as well, because a lot of times personas will bundle studio and artists for free with any of their physical units. This of course will depend on what you do and what you need, but some examples of personas hardware that come with artists include the Atom controllers, their audio interfaces, and their fader ports. Now my personal recommendation for this would be the single fader fader port. This is a physical studio one controller with a motorized fader that will benefit anyone regardless of workflow. I've done a full video on the fader port and why it's one of my favorite units. So if you want to see a video on that, then click right over here. 